That's 560. Is it a 560? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's old. It's quality. Yeah, it's quality. It's touchscreen. <laughs> that's the first touchscreen. So we're getting ready to take Gus down to Florida to get a new panel. Um, this panel's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but in flying, I found that I learned how to fly in the glass cockpit. And one of the things that I've really missed is having that information right here in front of me and then having the touch screen. I really, I'm kind of an iPad. I grew up on iPad, so that's comfortable to me. Um, and there's some things that I don't really like about having to do this when I'm flying IFR and things like that. So I've decided to spend some money, do an upgrade on the panel, and we're having that done at Saint Aviation uh, just outside of Ocala, Florida. One of the big things we'll be doing is a Dynon Skyview HDX 10 inch screen right up here that'll have basically my heads up display. Uh, it'll replace um, all the airspeed, attitude, um, this will be replaced, which I'm really happy to be replacing the DG. I've already replaced that once. On climb outs and things like that, I really have a hard time trying to get good headings and stuff like that. So that's been kind of a problem for me. I thought I was getting a 540. Looks like what we've got is a 440. We may talk about doing a 540 instead. I'd really like to have the big screen, uh, just more real estate on the panel. We'll be doing the PMA 450B uh, instead of this. So we've got the KMA 20 TSO right now. That's uh, pretty antiquated as far as I'm concerned. So we'll have Bluetooth audio. Pretty excited about it. I found out about the company from uh, SoCal Flying Monkey. So if you've watched his channel, he had Saint Aviation do his avionics and just really liked the way that looked. It sounded like it was a good system. Other than that, it should look similar, but much fancier, which I'm really looking forward to Gus getting the new panel. So, and they will remove everything. Now they pull out all the seats, all the carpet. I mean, they basically, it's kind of like an annual, they gut it. So this, this though, I'm really, this drives me nuts. Uh, the planes that I trained on had Garmin 650s with uh, Aspen 1000s. And so it always automatically sets your, um, set your heading for you and sync that with your GPS. And so this, I mean, it's always, it's just, seems like it's always a never ending battle to try and keep that thing dead on. It'll be nice to when they give me a heading to be able to just flip that and know that uh, that's the heading I'm on. Um, yeah, so it'll be really exciting to see all this go down. So today what we're going to be doing, or over the next couple of weeks, is installing a uh, complete Dynon system in this Blanca. So that's going to be the Dynon 10 inch screen, which will be complete with engine monitor um, that's got moving map and set synthetic vision, all your PFD, everything on that. Um, and of course there's going to be a backup Atahars unit, a D10A, which we haven't figured out exactly the layout, but there's also going to be a G5. Um, which is made by Garmin. That'll be driving the autopilot. And uh, for navigation system, we're going to be replacing this Garmin 430 um, with a Avidyne 540, which is a bigger screen. And it's, it uses a lot of the same wiring, actually. It um, does the same stuff but just a whole lot nicer. And it's about a lot. straight across trade, right? It is almost a straight across It's trade, almost yeah. straight across, like $15,000 yeah, for, uh, for my old one, I think is about what we get, right? <laughs> no, no, not, oh, not straight oh, across that way. I not, thought you were talking no. about wiring. No, straight I'm across wiring. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're doing a whole new uh, intercom system. So this little intercom box is going away. This, uh, this comm panel up here is going away. I think you're the getting the- PMA 450B. Yeah, yeah. It so says the 8,000, I think, maybe on the work order, but we... Uh... Uh, 450B. Okay, yep. It. Yep. yep. So that's going to be a four-place intercom, um, and that's that's Bluetooth, I believe. Uh, so you should be able to tune your phone to And those are up everything. to six-place, right? Uh, there might be six-place, but we only got a four-place harness. Oh, well, you so. should have got a six-place, and I could put two more people back there. <laughs> totally. Right back in the, there. In the ski, yeah. ski hole? <laughs> they have yeah. to. You can put the babies in the ski hole, Absolutely. in the ski tube. Yep. And then, uh, so the, the Garmin transponder is staying, the 345, that's gonna stay, and that's gonna provide uh, ADS-B out and traffic on your uh, 540, as well as on your iPad. 
Um, and then the Dynon will actually have its own ADS-B in system, which will uh, give traffic just on the Dynon, which is really cool because it shows up on the map, but it also shows up on the PFD and no, it changes colors. You keep saying iPad, but it's like when I get all this, I'm not gonna feel like I need to have an iPad. It can be there and I'll carry one, but. I fly without one because I have the Dynon in Jesse's plane um, and I don't even use an iPad anymore. Because it seems like, I mean, the thing I'm using an iPad for is all the digital and all the information that I won't need right. anymore. Charts, which you'll have on your on your. Because will, will we have XM weather? Oh, you'll have everything, it's ADS-B, yeah. So. Yeah, you'll, yeah. Have, uh, you'll have everything you need. There's nothing that, there's nothing that you can't get on the Dynon that you can get on the iPad. Of course, your old comm is going away and you're gonna have the Skyview comm um which will have a lot of cool functions basically you'll be able to take whatever airport is in your flight plan and send it over to the comm radio so you can just hit the send over the comm button and then you'll have airport tower ground atis atc that's the push buttons. of a button instead of having to tune all the frequency. turn knobs and all that stuff that's going to yep. be very very nice yep. and I, you, I don't really care about I, I'd rather USB ports, That's not that. Okay, so uh, you want one on each side of the, of yes. the panel? Okay, those are 50 bucks a piece, so let's... Throw them in. Yeah, I'll definitely add Can that. you put any back here? In the back? Is that a, a uh, do no do? That would be a lot more difficult, but we can definitely look into it. Okay, look into it, let me know. If you can't, it's not a big deal. Okay. Well, come check this out. Let's see Gus. What's going on with Gus? Gus. Oh, that's Gus. It looks like a Gus, doesn't it? All right, so I just got back to St. Aviation and we're gonna go check out the new plane. We have not seen it yet, so let's go see what this looks like. <laughs> Surprise. Howdy, what's going on? How's it coming? It's coming good. Are we about ready to? Yes, sir. We're, looks uh... like we've got some weather issues. So we're supposed to be out there, maybe doing a test flight, but we're gonna have to wait a little bit. We're about 300 overcast today, the lowest approach. Uh, Lowest approach to this runway is 500 feet. Um, they've got one approach on our nav approach. So we will have to wait for things to get a little bit better before we're able to take out flying, but we can get used to our panel a little bit and start seeing how things work and how we interact with it. So kind of excited for that. You know, we have this because it's tied into the autopilot right. for the autopilot. And this will also talk to the Dynon when we get the new autopilot. So when we go to the STEC 55X, my question is, is when they give me a heading, if I put the heading on on the Dynon and that's in heading mode, will it automatically follow and it'll talk to this? No, no, you so still have to operate that? the heading bug over here. I'm gonna get a charger on this thing because it's yeah. really low yeah. and then we'll go. All right, so we just took the plane up for its maiden voyage and uh, we do that to make sure there's no bugs in the system and quickly realized we had a couple bugs so they're gonna start working on that I think I'm gonna head back to the hotel hang out for a little bit but what we found uh, what we found that was causing us some problems are first there's a wire between our number one and our number two comm radio um, that needs to be installed uh, right now there that wire is not in there so when you're using one radio it's trying to it's basically blasting the other radio and sending us kind of a screech into your ears um, so we need that wire to tell the one radio you know, so that the two radios can communicate and make sure that uh, when you're transmitting on one it's not trying to blast it to the other uh, basically just says hey I'm being used right now don't try and transmit the other thing that we found is uh, for our for the autopilot to work here in heading mode is the way we're going to use this autopilot now and we'll get our GPS steering off of the Garmin um, we used to use nav mode for when we were on a G, uh, basically following a GPS course, and we won't use that anymore. It'll feed our course from here to the Garmin, and then from the Garmin into there. So heading mode 
Uh, we'll just switch GPS steering on and off. But we couldn't get, uh, we weren't able to get rid of the attitude indicator here because the current autopilot needs that attitude indicator to to help us figure out how much we need to roll. And so uh, it gets its attitude and the roll rate off of the attitude indicator. But what we were finding is, is it didn't, it wasn't getting the information it needed from the attitude indicator. So when we put the autopilot on, we were just, it was banking, over banking, trying to find that point, um, which was unsafe. We should only bank 20 degrees and we were getting 45 degree banks and stuff. So not what we want to have happen. So to figure out why the autopilot is not getting that information from the attitude indicator and get that hooked up. And then the last thing we had is the blank has got a little bit of an interesting uh, gear setup in the fact that it's automatic. So if you, if two parameters are met, it will automatically come down. The first parameter is, is anytime you pull the throttle back just a little bit, it, it comes off a pressure switch. And if it comes off that pressure switch and your airspeed is not indicating uh, over, I think it's 110 miles an hour. Uh, somebody else may be able to comment on that, but anything under 110 miles an hour, um, which is best glide in these planes, the gear will automatically come down because that's a safe gear speed. Uh, and that's to help you remember or help you prevent gear up landings. So we went to pull it off of full power. And as soon as I did that, uh, we felt a weird vibration and then noticed that right down here, the gear on safe light was coming on. Um, so when the gear on safe light came on, we're like, well, that's kind of weird. And I could, so we slowed it down, pulled the breaker, which luckily I installed, had him install a pullable breaker right down here uh, for my gear. And we pulled the breaker, pulled it off throttle, and then I could feel the gear lock into place in my feet, which is very common in these planes. So you can kind of usually get three indicating lights right down here and then you'll feel it in your feet uh, through the rudders. Well I felt it come down and lock um, but we weren't getting any indicating lights and normally I would test that right here by pushing this button but unfortunately this time I was too busy trying to check all the other new systems that pushing that button got missed. So um, had I done that pre-flighting the plane uh, we probably would have noticed that. Uh, so that's kind of my bad my bad for missing that on the pre-flight but anyhow we uh, were able to pull that breaker get the plane slowed down overflew the runway real quick just to have somebody double check and make dang and sure our gear was down because we didn't have our lights and uh, they confirmed that the gear was down and we landed they'll address those three issues and then we'll go up for another flight so you kind of feel a little bit like a test pilot and I feel for those guy guy right there because he has to do this like all the time this would yep. make me nervous. I'm just not cut out to be be doing this stuff. I mean, but it was good to have gone through some of the other things I've gone through because it was like, okay, let's do some troubleshooting. It's not the end of the world. As long as we got fuel and we're flying, we're good.